Hello, everybody, and welcome to International Podcast Day 2020. We have a incredibly stacked panel here for International Podcast Day 2020. This has been a year in the making. I know Carrie Ann is joining us. She is the one that reached out at the end of last podcast day and was like, how can I contribute? And Carrie, you were the first on the list this year, and I'm so excited that you have brought together five different Caribbean communities. We cannot be more excited and pleased to have everybody here. So welcome in, everybody. How are you? Thank you for having us. We are great. Awesome, man. Ready to go. Good, good, good. Well, let me quickly thank our International Podcast Day sponsors. You can find them over at internationalpodcastday.com slash sponsors. We'd like to give a really big shout out to our platinum sponsor, Blueberry. They have the most flexible and powerful tools in podcasting. If you head over to that website, you can find a promo code for a 30-day free trial. As well, we'd like to thank our gold sponsors, Focusrite and Podient. They are just amazing within the space. They continue to help independent podcasters push their way through into the space. And of course, I cannot forget to thank each and every one of our 60 plus podcasters from 26 different countries, uh, including five different just on this panel alone. So thank you all for making this happen. Um, so I am going to get out of the way. I cannot wait to see what you guys are going to be presenting and talking about the power of podcasting in the uh, Caribbean community. So thank you all and welcome to International Podcast Day. Thank you for wow. having us. Happy International Podcast Day, everyone, and welcome to the Vibes panel <laughs> from, <laughs> from, Patua, from Patua to Creole, literally, yes. um, the power uh -huh. of podcasting in the Caribbean community. So hi from to everyone around the world joining us. Um, we are so excited to be able to share our voices as the Caribbean and podcasting is exploding. Yeah, and definitely. so we just really need to have this opportunity to, to let people hear from our own words what it's like podcasting in the Caribbean community. So I'm going to do a little intro of myself and then we're going to go around and do the introduction. All right. So my name is Carrie Ann. I'm the host of Carry On Friends, the Caribbean American podcast. I've been doing this for over five years. I'm the founder of Caribbean Podcast Directory and it's how I've met this amazing group of people. And um, so Dallin, you go next because we are going to be country order so go awesome what's going on everybody my name is dallon vanderpool representing the british virgin islands been podcasting now for just about four and a half years uh, i'm the creator of the recently rebranded careers and the cash flow podcast you can check us out over at dallonv.com slash podcast where we talk about financial education money all that kind of stuff so you're interested in correcting your connecting your career goals to your financial moves come over and check us out all right all right, so Miss Soy, you're next up on the list. Hi, everybody. My name is Miss Soy. I'm from Haiti, uh, here representing the Teachers Bar a podcast, uh, which is a podcast hosted by myself and four of my friends, where we speak of just um, normal things that are happening in and out of Haitian society, um, just uh, how the youth is really facing um a change in, in the social context where things are evolving and um a lot of the culture is still a little back so it's just a podcast where we speak about things that are happening to us just to open up conversation a little bit and broaden the spirits if you want so it's a pleasure to be here with you guys and thank you so much for having thought of me absolutely katia up you next Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Kadia Francis from the Digital Jamaica podcast out of Jamaica. <laughs> and the podcast is really a tech slash digital uh, education information space. I saw where there was a gap in information surrounding tech and digital in Jamaica. And I saw where they were actually experts here who we don't really hear a lot about. So I wanted to talk to them, to share their stories, to inspire other Jamaicans to explore these spaces for opportunities to earn. So that's how the Digital Jamaica podcast came about. It started in January of December of 2018. So we're almost two years old. So I am ecstatic about that. Thank you so much, Kerry and Dave, for the invitation to come here um, to share. And I am looking forward to the conversation with the rest of you guys. Awesome. Wonderful, wonderful, Dano. You uh, last but uh, definitely uh, not least, least right? <laughs> yes, one of my, one of my favorite podcasts. 
<laughs> Hi guys, uh, thanks again for, for having me. Uh, my name is Dano McNichol, um, coming from you from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, my podcast is called We Are Crayons. Um, it's a spin-off of the company that I run and I founded about five years ago uh, called A Big Box of Crayons. And within We Are Crayons, we speak to Trinidad and Tobago creative thinkers and makers. Uh, we just have conversations about their processes, what they struggle with, how they overcome those struggles, and what they are thinking about and how they drive themselves as creative individuals. So that's it in a nutshell. And I'm, I'm just like really grateful to be able to, to meet up with you guys and, and be able to share on this international podcast day. Let's get it going. Yes. So um, you are coming from Trinidad. Katie is Jamaica. Miss Soy is in Haiti. Dallin is BVI, VI, um, Panama right now. Yes, and I'm here in um, Brooklyn, New York. So we kind of covering a full spectrum because um, mm -hmm. so when it comes to podcasting in the Caribbean, what are you seeing in terms of the differences? Um, you know, we you clearly are seeing mainstream or what America is doing from a podcasting lens. But what does it look like locally for you? Um, uh, let's go with you first, Katia. All right. Well, podcast really isn't in the car. I don't want to generalize, but for the most part, podcasting is a new medium in the region, right? And that's definitely true for Jamaica. You do have more and more persons coming on stream to the podcast. Really, the first person I saw um, to take the podcast space seriously is Henika Watkis Porter. Shout out to Henika um, with the Entrepreneurial You podcast. And I saw where she was actually getting into a space where she wasn't just talk. Her voice wasn't just local anymore. It was more international. So she was having conversations with huge international names in the business in the business field. And I'm thinking, okay, well, this is possible. It is possible to start something, have that conversation, and invite people to be a part of that conversation with you. And then through doing that, grow your own personal brand while, in a sort of way, advocating for the space that you're in. So she was actually the first person I saw doing that and then there was Ingrid Riley who her podcast was more seasonal than anything else and it was mostly focused on tech and that's the space that I'm particularly interested in but the frustration for me was that I didn't see a lot of people really having a dedicated conversation where we're looking at what what is what are the expertise that is available here because we tend to look externally when we talk about tech and digital we tend to invite external voices into the space and the problem with that is they don't have the, the same experiences that we do which means that whatever it is that the solutions that they're proposing is not experiential and because of that it's not effective and i knew that the, the expertise was there i see them i talk to them every day so i was like why are you guys not out there they didn't have a space there was no forum so i decided i was going to create one hence the digital jamaica um platform but i see more and more jamaicans now using the space and what I'm particularly proud of is that it's a, it's a broad range. There are queer Jamaicans now who are on there talking about their experience as Jamaicans, as queers. There are moms out there. Debbie Bassoon is, has her podcast where she's a mom. She talk about mom stuff. You have a millennial podcast. There's so many different genres, categories, interests now being um, expounded upon in the podcast space. Um, locally and as the medium becomes more popular as, as more persons decide to start talking about what it is that they do and what they represent and sharing their stories and experiences I think it is, it's inspiring more people to take up what is really a relatively easy medium to take up to start voicing and expressing themselves so I'm actually very happy with the steady increase of podcasters locally Thanks. Ms. Saw, I want to get to you in Haiti, particular. Um, you know, I've been to Haiti um, through the Haiti Tech Summit. There's a perception of Haiti. And one of the things that I love about your show, I mean, 
it's not so much Kringlish as it is mostly you you're talking in Creole completely. So if you are if you have no idea of how to listen or speak Creole, the, the show is not for you, but that's not a bad thing. So talk to me a little bit about podcasting in Haiti in particular. I mean, um, as uh, Katie just said, it's really an emerging thing, even here in Haiti. There aren't that many po Haitian podcasters, Haitian podcasts, if you want. Um, for me, what was important was to be able to have an open and honest conversation out loud. Um, a lot of times you'll see in, I believe in a lot of Caribbean countries, um, just there are a lot of things that are hush-hush in our society that we're not generally allowed to say out loud. And so it was important for me to have a platform where I was not being censored in any way, shape, or form. So that's why, as opposed to like going on television or going on radio, where you have to kind of respect a line for whatever media it is. Um, for us, we chose a podcast because we knew we'd be able to, to speak freely and openly about the things that we wanted to. And that was important. I think that was lack lacking in our community. It was just... Um, Honest voices, but relatable voices um, and relatable experiences that we could say, hey, we're all going through the same things. How about we join in a conversation and, and open honestly about certain things? Great. Dano, I'm coming I'm coming to you, Dallin. No worry. I'm, I'm patient. I'm patient. It's cool. It's cool. I'm, I'm coming to you. All right. Come, Dallin, with the mood, like, back, background, everything. <laughs> you right? <laughs> Can't hear you, Dallin. Normal podcast stuff, you know, like yeah, take yeah, your yeah. mic. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were hearing that on before, but I think we're not. Okay. Yes, it, we there, there, there you go. Yes, yes, right, yes. Okay. Run it down. Yes. Right. Right. So for me, it's it's new. Um, I've only been podcasting. This would be like my second year in it. Um, but I've been listening to podcasts for like close to five years on a consistent basis. Uh, the yeah. only thing I would say here yeah, now, the first local podcast I found in Trinidad and Tobago was one of our local DJs. And he was doing of this like mixes and putting it out through the podcast made. So it wasn't necessarily an, you know, talk podcast per se. Um, now I'm seeing other podcasts cropping up. Um, talk dealing mm -hmm. with things similar to Miss Soy, you know, about you know how the young people are dealing with 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 stuff. Um, there are also more things centered around um, arts and culture in that in that space and business as well. Um, so I can name a few off the top of my head. So we have Caribbean Power Lunch, which deals more along with yeah. business. Uh, talk about us is culture and arts. Uh, the culture club or something like that i believe um it's a culture tribe sorry it's uh young people just talking about issues like like that um and i think that that's, that's really good um obviously there are people who are thinking about oh, podcasts and and want to jump straight into the money you know so i'm sure that's something that we're gonna we're gonna discuss as well yeah but we're gonna get to that yeah but that's that's where the, the the landscape is for us right now and i'm sure um there are many other people probably trying to get into the space now that we have um time yeah. <laughs> you know um so and and now that people are trying to find other ways of expressing themselves in that we can't you know be out and about as we would like so i think it's it's, it's going to grow pretty pretty quickly all right, so Dallin, come in, rope in selector. Yeah, man, uh, similar, to, <laughs> similar to Dano, I think the first person as far as the British Virgin Islands goes that I saw, not podcasting in the sense that we do it now, but using the distribution platform like Libsyn, for example, to podcast was a guy named DJ Bertram from the British Virgin Islands. He started putting out mixes the same way. And this was, you know, years ago before I think podcasting was even as, as mainstream-ish as it is now. And then years later, I came on four years ago. I think I might have been the first, tr I guess, traditional-ish podcast in terms of talking about issues and that kind of thing to come on stream. And since then, we've seen a small pickup in it. I think the listenership of podcasts has, or the, the habit of listening to podcasts has picked up a lot more 
over the past two to three years, even more so than having more podcasters creating. Uh, so I'm in there. There's two other people I know of. One young lady who I helped uh, get her podcast up and going. Her podcast is called Such a Girl. This is Kyla Kanisha Forbes. And then I just casually yesterday saw one more podcast pop up. A uh, guy said he's launching one, a guy from BVI named Bunchy out of Anigata. He's big in the tourism industry. So I'm excited to see what he'll do with the space as well. I think in the, in the British Virgin Islands, I think the listenership picked up a lot after Hurricanes, Irma, and Maria. Obviously, because it knocked out everything else. You know, no TV going on. <laughs> um, no TV and that kind of stuff going on. So it freed up a space there where uh, there's space for more independent media. Especially, I can remember during the first three months or so after the hurricanes when everything was shut down, I just happened to be outside of the BVI. I left like two weeks before. And we actually end up using a podcast format as the only way to get news out there as to what was happening. I would get phone calls here and there, two, three o'clock in the morning from people on the ground, put it together in a kind of news format kind of thing and throw it up online via a quick, uh, I think it was a square space, square space that we put together. And we're able to use podcasting in a sense to try to get some information out there, which again was totally contrary to a lot of stuff you're seeing on the mainstream media. You know, people are saying, "Oh my gosh, there's people out there eating people." I'm like, "What the? What are you talking about? <laughs> what are y'all talking about, man? That's not what's happening." But the mainstream media, as you know, they and I experienced it first time for the first time, having to deal. I'm not going to call names of stations, but having to get in contact with major news networks, and you're trying to tell them the truth, and they're saying, "Can you confirm this narrative?" I'm like, no, 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 but here's the truth. And they're like, no, we already have a story that we want to tell. We're just looking for any random person who can lend some credibility to it. So that's where you see, again, the, the power of the podcasting coming in to be able to tell some independent truths and the stories. And obviously, to bring us together. I mean, look at this panel right now. Even though I've never been to Haiti, I've never, uh, I, I need to go back to Trinidad because I was too young to do Trinidad proper. If you understand what I'm saying, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the power to bring all of us together in this kind of way to understand the stories that are happening in Haiti, they're happening in Trinidad, they're happening from a Jamaican perspective up there with Kerry and understand what's going on in Jamaica. I think this is the power even for just the Caribbean to bring us together and then to get our message out to the rest of the world. You know, yeah. what, before we move to the next segment, I just want to recap this because what I've been hearing and I think the most chance, you know, like the biggest thing is as a region, we're impacted by so much. We're yeah. unlike Europe or Africa where borders are sheared. We are little rocks yep. in the middle of water. And so podcasting <laughs> is not only to amplify the voices of our local experts to, to challenge tradition in the age of di the new digital age right but podcasting is used as a new form of media especially when the weather severely impacts us yeah right where traditional media is still still has a foothold in the messages that they can tell about us and the region and we're using our collective voice to say no man that's not how it go yeah. right so what what are other challenges specifically as a podcaster do you face um from the region and then um what are some advantages of being a podcaster in the region? Who, who want to take that first? I can go first. Go um, on, what I've noticed in, and this happens, this is almost, it's an organic thing, um, but it, it, may, it may pose a problem down the road. What I've noticed happening is that celebrities have now discovered the space. <laughs> Celebrities have now discovered the podcast space, the YouTube space, the digital media space where everyday regular folks had an opportunity to brand themselves, had an opportunity to speak and be heard and taken seriously and all of these things. Celebrities who, and, and now we're realizing they weren't as rich as we thought they were. <laughs> they're not taking over the space. They're gentrifying and the podcast they're space. They're <laughs> gentrifying I the like podcast that. and the youth and the YouTube space, <laughs> getting in on those YouTube coins, <laughs> okay? <laughs> now, the problem the problem that that poses is that with a celeb celebrity status, you overshadow. You overshadow the regular everyday person on the platform, even if you did have an audience that, that you share, you know, share this audience with this already big name. Another thing with these digital platforms is that these platforms are like launching parts for unnamed, let's say unnamed, I, I prefer to say unnamed than no name, <laughs> unnamed people trying to build a brand. This is 
yet to be discovered. Yeah. Okay. This is our, the digital space give us an advantage in that way where we get to create a story, tell that story, share our experience, you know, be in charge of a particular narrative, kind of get some people behind you, build a momentum and maybe possibly monetize in some way, shape or form. Now, when you have these big, big name celebrities who already have a following coming onto these platforms and dominating these platforms, it kind of takes away from what you are trying to do over there. So not, not to say that the space isn't big enough for everybody, but we are on an island. It's a very small space still. Even the digital space, you still have traditional issues coming over from traditional media where you only saw certain people on TV, or only certain people got radio interviews or TV interviews. You're seeing that now creep into digital media spaces. And that's kind of something that I am very apprehensive about something that I'm actually anti, anti in some way, shape, or in some some forms. I know Carrie says she's excited about it. I'm not particularly. I, I think. I mean, I think. I think <laughs> one know, good side about that. No, no, ears. No, what, what, what? Uh, the, what you bring up, you know, is a global problem. It's not a yeah. Jamaica problem, you know, yeah. because it's the same right. problem that podcasters here in the U.S. have. Every other podcaster yeah. getting some exclusive deal. It it just comes in and it kind like you said, it overshadows the work because they didn't they didn't necessarily have to build from from scratch. They already had a foundation, yeah. and then because the industry is numbers hype, numbers is the the, the sexy girl upon the but you know, be, you know the beach are walking with our two right. right? So everybody's like, ooh, numbers, yeah, right. But those numbers are built in, and what a lot of platforms don't realize is that the next thing comes, the celebrity goes with their numbers to the next platform, right? to the next thing, right, right, right. and that that's uh. That that's something I, I I I tend to have a difficulty because going even going back to um that numbers thing certainly my experience is that these people aren't necessarily ones who provide the most value for people certainly they're not saying anything different or new or refreshing and enlightening and I found doing this podcast and talking to some people and being able to share some stories the feedback I get is I didn't even know this person existed in Jamaica I didn't even know that this was something Jamaican do or feel that Jamaicans are in and when I talk about these people are absolutely amazing incredible people that we didn't know exist because they're not on these platforms they're not being given opportunities to talk on these platforms because we have lazy marketing people here and yes I said it and they go for low hanging fruit and the low hanging fruit is the people that as you said the sexy girl with the whole of numbers mm. on the so that's that's kind of one of the problems I'm having but there's also an advantage to that yeah, there is actually it. an advantage mm -hmm. that I don't know if you want me to go or Mama, you tell to, it because you I continue? think yeah because I think everybody can agree the celebrity thing is an issue across the board whichever yeah. country you come from the advantage to this is, again, something that everybody shares in the podcast space. The podcast space is a very selfish space, meaning that it's your own self-interest that you are on there about. So you can really niche down into a particular category or a particular industry or whatever and really get to a particular set of people who will hear what you have to say, understand what you say, appreciate you for what you're saying. And if they turn out to be the right people, then you're in the money and not necessarily monetarily, but in the money as in you can find yourself in certain spaces. You can start getting features. You can start branching out and your brand can expand and your reach, awareness, all of that marketing stuff can happen but you just have to be sure that you're picking you're picking topics that people can relate to and that you know who you're trying to relate to yeah. and you're doing what you need to do to get to them because certainly just starting a podcast is not enough you have to actually market that podcast mm -hmm. you have to actually get it in front of the people who it needs to get in front of you have to be talking in a language that they can understand too as a part of the whole relatability so and that's that's an advantage you have of a, as, a, as a smaller person there's no pretense. There is no people. People. There's no trust issue with people because, first of all, who are you? 
Where you again? Where you come from? There, there's no, oh, you remember when she did the on the TV? I never like that. There's no baggage because you're new, you're fresh. There's no, nothing that accompanies you there. And I think that's a particular advantage that you have. No remaining consistent. <laughs> that's a whole conversation. We'll, but that's we'll, also we'll an advantage that you, 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 you have there as well. <laughs> we'll get to that. Trust me. We can have a whole session just on that alone. A whole anybody, session. Anybody want to add to that? Because there's something we have to get to um, uh-huh. that is so important. The, um, so before that, um, anybody want to add to challenges or yeah, I opportunities? Mean, I mean, real quick, just to, just to touch on the celebrity, the, the gentrification, the celebrity gentrification of podcasts. Gentrification. So to speak. <laughs> the, the, I think one of the one of the or maybe the only one of the the good side effects to it is that at least even though you you're now sharing your your listenership or sharing your audience as Katie has said at least that with the celebrities coming in it's exposing more people to podcasting period so whereas somebody may say oh I've never listened to a podcast or what is it oh like oh that's the Joe Rogan thing or that's the whichever celebrity thing that they listen to so mm-hmm. if if a celebrity can be the entry point to getting somebody to understand how to download a podcast and the pod- app, podcast app or whatever it is, and then they end up listening to Kadia's podcast or Miss Soy or Big Box of Crayons or Carry On Friends or whatever it is, if they're bringing more people into the ecosystem in general, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, will, I will give them that as, as, as a thank you for it. I think the other thing that we suffer from, I don't know how it is in Jamaica and Trinidad and Haiti and that kind of stuff, but the internet. Like the, the the actual like having proper internet access is right. a, is a thing. I Let mean, me for the first two years of my show, we, we can do a, we can do a couple sessions on. I mean, internet. I wanted to do interviews for the first oh, two on. years. I spent two years with contacts and connections oh, wow. wanting to do actual remote interviews, but just nervous because I don't know if I tell hey Dano, let's talk at seven. I don't know if I'm gonna have internet at seven o'clock next Tuesday. And, you know, <laughs> I, I, I can't. I don't know. You know, we might be halfway through the interview and then like <laughs> things just disappear. You know the we're not just drop i don't know so i mean yeah. that kind of stuff i think i don't know how it is some in other islands but for outside. us i think that's maybe my- rain maybe maybe rain fell and some breeze but next thing you know no connection some rain <laughs> or you know i don't know rasta man chop a coconut outside and the internet i don't know i don't know you know <laughs> just things just happen in the caribbean so I, you want to jump on that because a lot of times when people talk about the Caribbean, I said, you know, um, like there are some shaming statements, like if you can't get a good mic or a good internet, not understanding geographic limitations right. or different oh. things. So can you talk a little bit about the limitation in terms of internet infrastructure? I mean, COVID has, COVID has kind of exposed how much the internet is as much a utility as electricity and water. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like some of those challenges the Caribbean is dealing with, I I mean, we all said a collective prayer when the versus with Beanie and Bounty went down fine. That's the best <laughs> Caribbean internet we've seen in here. Listen, I said they pulled all the generators and everything together. <laughs> To do us proud. There right. was a whole section of Jamaica that was black. No light. Like nobody else kept internet tonight except for these two. <laughs> right. But seriously, internet and the accessibility, you know, again, you can't just walk into a Best Buy and say, ooh, in, yeah, which which microphone or, right. oh, um, maybe Verizon is better cable than this one over here. Like, you well, literally only have two. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So talk to me a little bit about that, Ms. Soy, and then we get into the big discussion that everybody wants to talk about. Absolutely. I mean, I think, especially for Haiti, there's a lot of things that come into play that can be impediments to having like a good, decent podcast, um, not just internet infrastructure in general. I mean, here in Haiti, we don't have electricity 24-7. So um, a lot of times we won't have access to electricity to even be able to record. And as you said, it's not like, you know, I can't just go into a store and be like, okay, I'm going to buy the best equipment there is out there because that kind of stuff just doesn't exist here. It's just, you just can't find it here. Um, so if you don't have the proper means to have the proper resources outside of the region to bring back, it's really hard, you know, to, to get started. When I when I wanted to start with a podcast, I had no idea what to do. I, I Googled it. I said, oh my God, I don't, I don't, I don't have a microphone. I don't have anything. Um, we started going to recording studios, like actual recording studios to have them recorded by like as if I was recording an album so we would go and book sessions at the recording studio and just pay for hours ahead of time to just be able to go with our guests inside a studio sit down and do it that way 
And that's not the most practical way to do it. Yeah. Um, that's also not the most cost effective way to do it. That's what I was about to say. Jeez. <laughs> 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 the studio. Right. So um, also something that is maybe more prone to Haiti than other places is just um, the just political tension here. We have a lot of. So, you know, last year when we started the podcast, uh, we were in what we called a political lock-in where we couldn't leave our homes because there was political tensions and riots every day outside. And we were home, literally everybody, for three months. Wow. So, you know, nobody was coming out to listen to, to a podcast, to go record a podcast. Hey, it would have been a good time to have had pre-recorded episodes to release because everybody was home. But then we hadn't planned that, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that's just things that happen. And with podcasting here, I think my co-host and I have just learned to kind of go with the flow. It is what it is. It's going to get as good as it can get with what we have. Um, but we just prone ourselves on putting on a podcast that's of quality. And it's, hey, it comes out when it comes out. You know, I, I, I like to say every first, every 15th, every 30th, but <laughs> it comes out when it comes out. You're going to get it when you get it. You know, and I, I think that's the grace that I learned that, that needs to happen in the Caribbean. You know, I, I remember talking to colleagues like we do have rolling blackouts, you know, like little things that people take for granted. But all right, let's move to the hot topic. The hot topic. What anybody want to get who is the hot topic? What's the hot topic? I send you a shirt if you guess the hot topic. I mean, the fact that you oh, just switch into the street, the Jamaican patwa well, just has been nervous that? already. Money, like, you money, move from hot to hot. Monetization. Like, monetization. <laughs> Dano, come, come. I want my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No problem. You forget that. Um, so for me, I think um, right off the bat, um, I didn't get into it for the money. Um, granted yeah. that you know it's it's yeah. it's in your face, um, especially in North America. Um, that's like what people talk about, right? Um, for me, it's more about just getting the stories out there, getting my people to understand themselves and appreciate themselves across across the board, right? So, yeah. but I'm not adverse to making some money from this. Um, uh, to the point of Ms. Soy being able to get good equipment, being able to raise the level to, to, to battle with the celebrities who have the money to get good equipment, to be sure that the, the quality of what we put out is at our standard that is without question. You oh. know what I mean? Um, whether it yeah. is to get um, better internet, whether it is to be able to uh, get a subscription for your website or subscription to, to Lipson or, or Podbeam or, or whatever you're using to, to distribute your podcast. You know, so so money is in, is important, and I think that. What needs to happen is probably bringing the Caribbean together as as one, and and it's like creating a, and and I think Carrie Ann, you've done a, a wonderful job of of starting that, I believe, yeah, uh, with the directory that presenting that as one block, yeah that we can go to an advertiser or go to a sponsor and say, okay, we have this block within the Caribbean to do this thing and this is what we can bring to the table because there's no way that um, I will probably be able to reach high numbers within the small confines of my 1.1 million people, which mm. of is like, I don't know, one percent if so much actually listening to podcast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's that's where I am. So let me let me let me talk. Um, Kadia, um, I think the thing that we see a lot is we can all agree that going into podcasts with a monetization strategy first is just the wrong approach because it's yeah. not easy to monetize in podcasts, right? So not when in it this comes market. N not in this market or the market before because the monetization they spoke about <laughs> was not for us indie podcasters, so to speak, right? So mm -hmm. monetization could happen, but it could look differently. Any thoughts on 
how monetization looks different other than reading ads, you know, or, you know, what are some different ways that monetization can be considered as part of the Caribbean? Well, I actually, I agree with Dana. Well, I, di I did not start the Digital Jamaica podcast thinking monetization. It was literally out of frustration because I wasn't seeing who I wanted to see in the spaces that I think they should have been in. I didn't see them on the platforms that they should have been on. And I knew they, there were incredible stories here to be told. So I didn't start it. In, and and the, the more popular the podcast got is the more I had people going, okay, so when are you going to monetize? No, I, I have to understand the market I am in. We're talking about Jamaican business here. They don't even want to run a proper marketing campaign, much less advertise on a proper podcast. Website. Okay? Forget marketing campaign, they website. Don't, then they don't even have a website, okay? Much less to spend money. Upon what? What is upon who now? So that is that is the situation I found myself in. So I haven't really monetized what I have done, and this is a tenet for the entire platform, whether the podcast, the blog, social media. My thing is always collaboration. How can I collaborate with these other persons that are in the space? and get them out there as well as get myself out there and then provide something to the listening community that they will find value in. So whether we are collaborating for a workshop, whether we're collaborating because they have a product launch or something coming out, my entire platform is about educating and championing digital Jamaicans, Jamaicans in that space. So if I can collaborate with them to do that, that's fine. Now, how the money come in, the money kind of come in inadvertently because if you're collaborating these people on a project and the project happens and the project is successful, then you get paid for, for um, your part, the part that you would have played in that collaborative effort. So it, it's not a direct payment for your podcast or to advertise on your podcast. In fact, I don't think I want advertising on my podcast, to be quite honest with you. I've sat there. It's, it's a similar to, I don't know if you guys know Sam Harris. Sam Harris has a, a, a podcast, and he was actually, he spent one entire show talking about why he no longer, why he doesn't do paid advertising on his podcast. And then what he's asking his community to do is Patreon to support um, the podcast. And that is something I think more Caribbean people should probably get into using the Patreon and these other platforms for support in a podcast. And I'm saying that is because we have a very strong diaspora community right across the Caribbean who would probably support something like this, especially if your podcast is a positive, something uplifting, something that they can relate to, connect in some kind of way. They would probably want to support it in some way, shape, or form. So there is that platform that you can probably check out, the crowdfunding kind of thing where, you know, people are paying you to create the kind of content that they want to hear. That's a thing that happens everywhere else. That's maybe something that we can explore. But my whole thing is always, how can I collaborate with other people to get whatever that needs to be get to get out there and then maybe in some way, shape, or form, earn something from that collaboration or all of us yeah. earning from that collaboration has anybody tried the crowdfunding patreon or any any one of that no I, i'm, I'm I, too scared i'm I too scared to do work. it i don't think it worked with Chris. <laughs> yeah i i don't think it worked first of all you have big not podcasts necessarily and big locals, ones. you know i'm talking about the <laughs> diaspora community no i'm not i'm not say, no no same thing you know Martha, you have big podcasts and you have big money it's not it's not just that you have a big podcast in it is that in the caribbean the, the communities are small so people actually know who you are like right, oh right. carrie parents have a big house on the hill and she here begging me for two dollars a month <laughs> it, it, it's not, you're not just a random you're not just like the the, the digital jamaica pocket no no they know who you are are they watching you on the road? Oh, I she just passed. I just here in this fancy restaurant the other night, and so I must give her a dollar and three cents. Sh 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 so how should drive Mercedes Benz? I ask you. Yeah, I, I think. <laughs> I think as opposed to the Patreon side of it, I tried the Patreon thing when I just, you know, when I just came and I heard about it, like, oh yeah, this is this is what's gonna happen, blah 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 blah. Um, one platform that I mean, just to share in case anybody wants to try this out, that somebody just put me onto, like last week, a friend of mine named Michelle Beatty from the Career Tipper podcast. Is this is this alternative to Patreon called Buy Me a Coffee? So the flip with yes. it is. Instead of having to become a Patreon and member and register and this and that other, you can be like, no man, just make a one-time donation. It's literally just like buying you a coffee. coffee. 
Uh, and that, that might yeah. be a more flexible way for us to get folks into the fold rather than having, having to become a, a patron patron. The other thing I found with the monetization side of it is that we as Caribbean, everybody, but especially as Caribbean podcasters, we got to stop looking at the podcast as the business. The podcast is not your business. Not business. The podcast is your business card. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So your Yay. podcast is your business card that's now putting your face, putting you out as an expert for you to do other things. So I'm talking about speaking engagements. I'm talking about finding ways to monetize yeah. the skills that you have. I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. I just applied last week. The United Nations put out a, a, a job posting that a friend of mine flipped me. They're looking for someone to produce a podcast for them and host it. Right. And it's a paying position. So now you have a podcast, regardless of whether it's about whatever the United Nations wants you to talk about, but you have a skill set in editing audio, in speaking properly, in crafting a narrative. I mean, I said that I'll do some some mm-hmm. crazy graphics just now. And these are all things and hats that, you know, we all wear as a podcaster. You're not just a podcaster. You're a graphic designer, you're a marketer, you're a social media manager, you're a gentrification fighter. You're all kind of stuff <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> right? So these are skills that you can leverage. So take, stop thinking of the podcast as your business and think of it as your business card yeah. that says, I'm doing yeah. this skill. Here I am. Now, how do I spin this off into a speaking engagement? And in the Caribbean, what we need to do using people like Auntie Kerry here, who's our godmother of Caribbean podcasting, is put the dots mm-hmm. together and say, okay, if I know Dano talks about this topic and he's in Trinidad and I have a conference going on, whether it's in person or digital, and I'm over in the British Virgin Islands, hey, Jump on the phone. Dano, I need you to come speak at this. It's a pain engagement. Da 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 da. I'm going to send them yeah. a link to your podcast so they hear what you're talking about. And I'm going to bring you in on this. And then we start connecting the dots and crisscrossing the Caribbean digitally. I think that's how yeah. we're going to start leveraging ourselves to monetize and get this thing popping up. Definitely. I, yeah, I so so monet- monetization force is 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 is, is it's, it's not a direct it, thing. It's, it's indirect. inadvertently. Definitely. Yeah. And even even for me in the US. So we're talking about the Caribbean, but even for me here in the US, you know, like monetizing directly through the podcast. I've monetized out the podcast t shirts. You yeah. know, they're the biggest thing. Um, you know, again, the speaking opportunities. Um, the you know, I'm producing podcasts, so you know, I don't podcast full time as a job. I mean, it's a full time, but I do have a corporate nine to five. I yep. produce podcasts for my corporate nine to five. I when when the when one person left, they were like, "Oh, Carrie Ann knows social media. Let's ask Carrie Ann how to do these." You leverage these things, and you have to find how you can, like Katie said, indirectly find the skills to yeah. to kind of leapfrog you into opportunities. Collaboration is a big thing. Mm-hmm. Whenever I do interviews and I talk to people about Jamaica I'm like well I can talk about what's happening here but you know I big up Kadia I big up Carrie Lee because Carrie Lee is my sister in you know I talk about yeah. the people I know on the ground that yeah. are doing things because my knowledge is but so far and then I will talk to different people who are local so I think for podcasters and monetization it takes creativity but it also takes time because yeah. this t-shirt this t-shirt never come out until a whole year or two after because yeah. what people try to tell you and there's nothing wrong with it right but everybody sells one way of monetization and we know our audiences right they don't buy the same way as a largely american audience they don't consume no, they don't consume the same way same way yeah. nothing right even though i'm in new york one of the biggest you know collection of that's where we we consume differently and so we have to know our audience and this is kind of where you know you have to say i'm an expert in my audience maybe not carrie's audience but my audience and i know that they know business about that they business about this yeah. and so you know the monetization first with ads i think what we see is very misleading whether you're in the region or in you know the us it's very misleading because monetization looks very different now i want to get but to also before go you ahead. go on going back to what dano said as well about you know was it dano or not dano um Dallin. no miss haiti <laughs> <I'm so sorry>. <laughs> <Mistoy>. <laughs> Miss Toy, Miss Haiti 2020. <laughs> wait, wait. Miss, Miss Haiti 2021. This is very typical Caribbean behavior. Yes, remember your typical. name. Miss what's your name? Miss Chain. It is Miss Chain. Okay, Miss Haiti. So, um, Miss Soy said something that really touched a nerve for me, and when she was talking about 
the podcast giving her the freedom to literally say what's on her mind yeah. and be as authentic and as honest as she can be in her output. No, that diminishes when you go monet monetization as well, especially if you're going direct monetization where no, a company is going to come in and right. based on what their branding is and who they're affiliated with and who their partners are, whatever, you they now restrict what you can say and how you can say it and they want you to clean up your language a little bit. Yeah. And they, So it, it, that's also a downside to the direct monetization as well. And of course, it's a turn off for people. You've listened to podcasts and you have five whole minutes of ads that you're going, okay, this is annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So th there are downsides to it as well. And Jamaican people are not patient. I literally had to cut down my intro time from five minutes to two because the feedback I was getting was like, listen, we want to hear the person, not you. No offense. Yes. Five minutes is too long. Please to cut it down. <laughs> literally I had to cut it down. No right. patience for the foolishness. Get to it. We're well, talking well, well, already. Go. One, yeah, two, let's three. go. Let's so, go. All right. So, so we I, have, don't, I don't think the ads would work for my audience at all. So we have a couple work. minutes left. I mean, you can't believe it almost an hour. So we have a couple oh minutes God. left. So let's talk yeah. about how podcasting can help us change the narrative about the Caribbean, right? As new mm. media and like, what are those opportunities? You know, for instance, you know, like... You know, one, one of the things I realized with the directory, I, I kind of have to do a mini geography lesson where people don't mm -hmm. understand what's considered the Caribbean and having to say, well, mm -hmm. you know, I include Panama as part of the Caribbean, parts of Honduras because of the Garifuna and having a history. So tell me what you see as the opportunities for podcasts in terms of reframing the narrative or taking charge of our own narrative. You, Messiah, you know, locally, you know, down. I know everybody like what are the opportunities that you feel like you know podcasting give us a voice you know and we can tell our stories we don't need big platform abc P tell us you know how we should tell our own stories so talk to me a little bit about the opportunities that you're seeing there miss saw you go on well um for me i'd say like we, I, I insist on the podcast being both kind of in curling in english um both are means to shop and to, um, I guess, provoke a reaction out of people. Creole here in Haiti is looked upon in a pejorative way, if I can say, because it's kind of like a slang that is not really, that, you know, we're not supposed to really be using out loud. And so I make it a point to speak Creole on the podcast to include more people, to um, be the voice of more people as well. Um, we also use English because Truth be told, a lot of us are people who, most of us have gone to the States. Like I, I went to college in the US and then moved back to Haiti. Um, but English is kind of like a natural in and out for us. And I just wanted to, I wanted it to be as, to feel and sound as natural as we do in real life. Um, I think too, in the sense of the topics that we choose to address, like you see a lot of our topics are things that you not don't necessarily hear often in the community. Like we've had episodes where we had like a transgender who came and, and spoke about her experience as transitioning from a man to a woman. And that was just something very shocking for the community here because a lot of Haitians, a lot of people that I know even called me like, yo, we didn't know that this, this is happening in Haiti. Like, is this for real? Um, and so I, I try to just kind of nibble people to, to get a reaction out of, yeah the community for things that we're not necessarily used to hearing or being okay with or normalizing. And I think that's important. Um, I also just think overall, just being a part of the new world is important for the Caribbean. We're always late on everything, <laughs> everything. So just being able to be a part of a bigger community on a bigger scale, I think is important. So if we can grow this, niche little thing here or make it grow out of Haiti, out of out of them, out of Jamaica, out of anywhere, you know, it, it, it brings us closer 
to the rest of the world, I think. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we are out, we're running out of time, right? So um, before we run like in the broadcast, we're doing a virtual meetup on October 22nd, about 7 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. So we can continue a lot of this conversation at that virtual meetup. So you can DM me on Instagram because I didn't set up the page yet for you to register or you email um, Carrie at Caribbean Podcast Directory dot com because this is such a great conversation, such a necessary conversation and yeah. we can't do this in 50 minutes so mm -hmm. as we wrap up you know tell everybody you know the, um the this internet world. strikes again <laughs> <laughs> so um let's do a quick wrap up and tell people where they could find and um find you see i mean this is real time stuff we have to deal with so yeah. Mr. tell everybody where they could find you and could connect with you and then we just do our own robbie real quick mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you could find me on Instagram. My personal handle is Miss underscore soy. So that's M I S S underscore S O Y. The podcast is the link is in my bio if you can't get it. Um, it's called Teach Us by the Podcast, which is hard to spell, so I'm not even <laughs> it's a lot. But if you just go to my personal page, you'll see it. The link is on my bio. It's called Teach Us by the Podcast. All right, Katie, I'll hurry up before your internet strike again. <laughs> <laughs> The internet. What? What do you? Um, okay. So, in terms of uh, developmentally, that's what that's what we're talking about. No, you go. No, um, we go continue that developing the podcast. the podcast in Jamaica. Um, I as no. I as, no, no, as, no. Um, Dallin said. <laughs> it's, it's, see, what you want me to do now? Because everybody. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. See. Don't worry. Um, so, Dallin, you go on and wrap up because okay, we know what, this is going to happen. Okay, well, well we start out the yard internet. Uh, you can find me online. I'm what, at, is, what is going what, on? Okay, Katie is back. Katie is back. So, Katie, just to, we're, we're actually wrapping up. We're just, we're just dropping out where to find us on the internet right internet, now. Internet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can find me online at dallonv.com. Okay, find That's me -A on Instagram, digital.jamaica, or on the website, digitaljamaica.com. All right, all right, all right, Dallin, your turn now. Awesome. Be sure to check out Kadia <laughs> digitaljamaica.com. As I was saying, <laughs> you can find me online at dallonv.com. That's D A L A N V. Uh, all my social media handles as well for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, especially Dallin V. If you want to check out the Careers and Cashflow podcast, you can just search Careers and Cashflow. You'll find it there as well. But everything you need to find about me can be found over at Dallin V uh, on social media and as well dallonv.com. Dano. All right. So a big box of crayons.com. There you will find over a hundred stories of Trinidad and Tobago creatives. The podcast is available on most pod pod podcast platforms. We just recently also got added to Amazon. So nice. big for that. So thank you for them. And yeah, our Instagram at a big box of crayons. Easy. All right, and for me, um, at Caribbean Podcast is where you will find me and all these wonderful podcasters and new podcasters. So if you're listening and you're a Caribbean podcast or you're watching and you have not joined the directory, it's free. It's free. It's free. It's and it's free. good. <laughs> right? It's free. You I'm just have to meet. What, what was that? And Auntie Carrie's nice. Yes. <laughs> <I'm> nice. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's free. You just have to meet some consistency requirements and you can, you know, geographically, you're, you're of Caribbean heritage. And um, it's really, I'm really glad that we're able to have this conversation. And I'm looking forward to everyone joining us for the meetup. Katie will continue her thoughts about developing podcasts in Jamaica. And I'm not, it's not to make joke, you know, but I think Katie, from when it comes to digital stuff, I watch her and she knows kind of what's happening on the ground. So I really want her to be able to say certain things and miss everybody here has a lot to say and we just can't um, say it all right now. So um, as I like to say at the end of every episode of Carry On Friends, everybody walk good. Thanks for having us. Happy International Podcast Day. Thanks to Dave for having us we are so excited and we're so glad that you allowed us to kind of be here this has been awesome i i wish we could have blocked out four hours of today just to have you all you brought so much energy so much passion i don't think we've laughed this hard in a very long time um, but that's that's what i love man podcasting is fun it's entertaining it's real at the same time 
Um, there's a lot of things to, to get through and manage and also kind of looking towards the future, but also being real about it. And that's what I appreciate that all five of you have brought to the uh, International Podcast Day table today. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, from Steve, myself. Thank you for representing uh, the Caribbean community. And I want to thank you so much. Thank you for Thanks, having Dave. us. Happy International Podcast Day. All right. Thanks. Well, that's, that's going to wrap up this session yeah. again. Happy International Podcast Day, everybody. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right. Cheers. Bye.